Dr. Henry Lee is one of the most foremost forensic scientists in the world. From testifying at the O.J. Simpson trial to reinvestigating the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Dr. Lee has done it all. Growing up in China, Lee and his 12 other siblings fled to Taiwan at the end of the Chinese Civil War. He arrived in Taiwan safely with his mother and siblings, but tragedy struck when his father, who traveled separately, was killed when an overcrowded passenger ship on his way to Taiwan collided with another boat. In an exclusive interview, Dr. Lee tells us about his early life in Asia and his over 40-year career as a forensic scientist. Uh, when we went to Taiwan, my mother took all the siblings and uh, myself, went to Taiwan first. During the revolution, the shipwreck really changed our life. From very rich, become very poor. Um, my mother single-handed raised all 13 kids. Dr. Henry Lee credits his mother for the success he has had. She had to raise 13 kids after fleeing war-torn China to live in Taiwan. She makes sure each of us finish our terminal degree. Uh, she wants us to study hard, to be a good person, and uh, can make a contribution to the world, to the society. That's what we follow of my mother. For step. So my mother actually is my father, also my mother. Yeah. That's why people often ask me who I respect the most. I said my mother. Who I scared the most, also my mom. Lee's father was killed when the passenger ship Taiping collided with another boat on its way to Taiwan. Over 1,000 people lost their lives on the ship that was filled to twice its capacity. Of course, uh, when we left China, to Taiwan, we, my mother brought some uh, valuables. So the first couple, uh, older brother, sister, that time they already graduated from the college. Yeah. Uh, so they start working. My mom basically uh, have a really uh, well-disciplined schedule. We all have to get up early, help with the house chore, they might have a newspaper raw, try to deliver the morning paper, then go to school. Growing up, Lee wanted nothing to do with crime or forensic science. He wanted to play basketball. Uh, when I was in high school, I really loved basketball. Yeah. Although I'm short, but I'm pretty quick. And uh, uh, my coach looked at me and said, son, when you grow another two feet, you're going to be the best basketball player. I took literally Every night I got home, try to exercise, stretch, and all kind of uh, movement. Hopefully squeeze a couple more inch out of myself. After realizing he couldn't play basketball professionally, he decided to enroll at the police academy, which was tuition free. He was successful in the academy, graduating top two in the class, and quickly becoming a police captain. We got up so early in the morning, 5.30. We do physical exercise. We learn. Kung Fu, Judo, wrestling, shooting. Then by 8 o'clock, I have class, very rigorous class. We have to learn so many different subjects. Uh, so I'm pretty good in taking exam. So I become number two in the class. Usually, uh, police college, when you graduate, everybody, if you graduate, you take a national exam, if you passed, then you become a lieutenant. If you score high, number one or number two, they quickly promote you as a captain. So when I was 22, I was appointed as a captain. He goes to the streets of Taiwan protecting the citizens of Taipei. So police usually use uh, interrogation technique to interrogate a person. Of course, later we'll find out that's inhuman. And sometimes the innocent people was forced into confession. Everyone will confess, right? Yeah, everybody confessed because they cannot stand the pain. In 1965, without speaking a word of English, he and his wife moved to the United States. Come to U.S., I'm much older now. It's already 27. And meanwhile, the rest of the students, 18 or 20. So I want to finish four years in two years. Uh, I'm really lucky I study hard because the police college discipline are really working 
her, studied her, or is in addition upon a job at the NYU Medical Center as a technician. So I can take care, raise the family, and uh, also goes to school same time. So I'm really blessed because I met a lot of good people yeah. and good family helping me out. So I have three jobs, teach Kung Fu, and uh, wait on tables, work at the NYU Medical Center as a technician. Meanwhile, uh, every semester, I try to take 22 to 24 uh, credit oh. hours and break, also break the school record. Initially, they say, no way, you can take that many courses. And uh, I say, well, if I flunk, that's my own problem. <laughs> let me try. If you don't let me try, you never know. Yeah. So after a year, I can take any courses. Uh, so I finished pretty quick and then transferred to NYU and a master degree program. And uh, finally, I got my doctor degree in molecular biology. So I'm pretty happy. Uh, a lot of people ask me how I did it. It's no secret, work hard. Uh, can you tell me why you came to University of New Haven and you, you had offers, you could have went to many other universities that had forensic science programs? After I got my doctoral degree, because my thesis professor and also my boss, I worked for him for 10 years, Dr. Severo Ochoa, he got Nobel Prize. So I got a lot of offer yeah. to work in the biochemistry field, except my interest is in forensic. I want to develop the forensic program. I want to enhance my ability to work in forensic field. So I decided to come to University of New Haven. Yeah. Second thing, because University of New Haven at that time had a very small program. So give me a chance, a platform. A chance to build it up. To build up. And uh, because University you're having is so small. And uh, because the forensic program actually literally no laboratory. Yeah. So this gave me a uh, really o opportunity to prove myself. And he proved the whole world. Today the university has hundreds of students studying forensic science. It has a crime scene center, a high tech forensic room, a crisis management center, and three classrooms. The institute provide services, training for law enforcement, in service, in other words, for the detectives, police chief, and uh, they come from all over the world. Uh, last count, we had just 59 different countries around the world sending their investigator and uh, police chief come here to learn. So we run a lot of workshop symposiums. We don't do pre-service, in other words, academic training. It's, uh, uh, conduct by the uh, School of Criminal yeah. Justice. Dr. Lee has worked on thousands of cases, including the 1994 murders of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman and the reinvestigation of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. OJ case, that time because the media hype and it become so uh, 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 popularized. In addition, be because there's a, a different ratio issue involved. That, that time the country becomes so polarized. Uh, most of the Caucasians think he's guilty. Most of the minorities think he's not. Uh, I said forensic scientists, we're not really say, working for defense or prosecution. Our job is to help find the scientific truth. That's how I got involved. And uh, that's why portion of my testimony was used by the prosecution. It's in favor of yeah. prosecution. Portion was used by defense. You're called by the defense, right? I called yeah. by the defense, but uh, yeah. for example, the DNA I reviewed, it's O.J. Simpson's DNA, yeah. except the blood sample have EDTA. The EDTA is not supposed to be in human blood. So where that EDTA come from? It's a preservative. So it raised a lot of questions. They call it trial of the century because this case changed the investigative procedure. Uh, even law enforcement forensic scientists who work for prosecution, we have to have certain ethics standard, follow the national guideline. 
And then do you think it's really bad when a case, like the OJ case, uh, it's really publicized and people are talking about it all the time? Do you think it hurts, like, what happens in the case? I don't think it's really hurt the case. As a matter of fact, wake up a lot of people. We shouldn't look at a racial issue. Uh, so many recent tragedy because the racial issue. Mm -hmm. This country is supposed to be a melting pot for everybody. Over the course of his career, he has investigated thousands of shootings, many of them mass shootings. Following the tragedy in Parkland, Florida, we asked him why these shootings continue to happen and what needs to be done to stop them. Uh, in my career, I probably investigate uh, over 300 so-called mass shooting cases. Mm -hmm. Uh, police shooting cases. Those cases is a tragedy. Yeah. Last year I had 18 high school <coughs> shooting case, which really, I think it's a wake up call for this country. We cannot continue. About 300 yeah. innocent student and teacher were murdered. Why? They, many family, the parents so busy, the kids home alone. Instead of study, they play the video game. The video game, a lot of violence. I think indirectly, you fact, a lot of the kids psychologically. Then the television program, the social media, it changed the whole, changed everything. Of course, the availability of the gun, so make it easier and uh, too easy to kill too many people. So I think to solve that, you have a good question. It's not say police can solve this problem. It's not say school. Post couple uniform officer with gun can stop that. We need a whole country, a policy, from the family to school to social media to law enforcement. We have to work together. Dr. Lee is now 79 years old, but he has no plans to retire. Today, he continues to teach aspiring forensic scientists, law enforcement officials, and students across the world. Like a lot of people say, I'm 80 years old now. They should just retire, retire. I retire five times now, but every time I come back to work because at least I can make some little contribution yeah. helping the society, help the younger people. Like my wife passed away last year. Psychologically, mentally, I'm almost hit the bottom of the pit of my career because we married 56 years. We dated three years, so almost 60 years together. All of a sudden, you lost a partner. Yeah. But I learned. A lot of my friends talked to me say, you can't just give up and uh, start drinking or start becoming a wano or start using drugs and uh, you still have a lot of time to help others. You may have seen Dr. Lee on television. He hosted his own TV show, Trace Evidence, the Case Files of Dr. Henry Lee. Those are because they're real cases, real people. It's difficult. And uh, initially, when they approached me, talked to me, I refused to participate. Yeah. Asked them to have an actress, an actor to play. Yeah. But later, because the real TV show, you cannot, it's not a show. Yeah. You have to know how to use the microscope, how to do the crime scene search. Because each episode takes five to seven days to film. Oh, okay. So 20 episodes a year, which means half a year gone. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have a uh, uh, TV program I participate in China called Challenge the Impossible. Uh, I'm one of the three judges. Basically, ordinary people can challenge their 
ability. For example, jump rope, a kid 13 years old, high school student can do 400 some laps per minute. You, you go all over the world uh, and you visited many countries. I was wondering, how many countries have you visited, do you think? Uh, 74 countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the following week, I'm going to be in India for a week mm -hmm. to lecture. Then I'm from India, then I go to China, uh, Taiwan, uh, Montreal. So the next few months, pretty busy. Yeah. Then I go to Middle East. And do you have any favorite places you like to go? Every country, you have to learn to love it. Because the culture, you have to respect other people's culture, other world, people's how they live. If you just use your own standard, you're going to hate uh, why they don't have steak. Uh, if they eat rice, let them be. You just enjoy the rice. Yeah, and um, I know forensic science is your thing, criminology is your thing, but do you have any other hobbies? I have a lot of hobbies. When I was high school, I played I basketball. Think, yeah. When I grow up, I become a kung fu master. Yeah. I collect stamps, I collect rocks. I have a lot of interest because everything, you have to learn to enjoy it. Yeah. Now I start plastic Chinese calligraphy. Yeah. Uh, it's a form of art and science combined. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, just pick up a hobby. And um, I want to finish up with, Connecticut. Uh, you lived in Connecticut for a while. And Connecticut is really well known for its pizza restaurants. Uh, do you have a favorite pizza restaurant in the state? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I, uh, of course, everybody uh, heard puppies, but uh, yeah. in Connecticut, West Haven, we have a good pizza restaurant. Every time we have a foreign uh, delegation come, yeah. we always treat them pizza. And uh, a good friend of mine work in the university. Uh, Mark, he make his own pizza. He have a stove, and uh, so uh, pizza is actually very close to Chinese pancake. So I think Marco Polo bring the pizza to Italy, and uh, now become the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the place called in West Haven? Uh, I don't want to tell you the name because other pizza place probably go to hate me. I think every pizza. Shop is good. Fine, what's it called? Give it up. What is uh, it? I, I really enjoy every every place. Any pizza, I like it. Uh, especially sometimes I make uh, my own topping. They just put on top with Chinese topping. Next time you should try that. <laughs> you can't give us the one? Come on, people want to know. Where does Henry Lee get his pizza? Oh, I get pizza from all over the place. All right, Dr. Henry Lee, it was great having you on. Thank you so much for watching. Right, it's a pleasure. Yeah. You are wonderful. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, you can go to my website, ravingryan.com. Come here. You can visit the Henry C. Lee Institute of Forensic Science, the Visitor Center. You can visit. Uh, you can see what cases you've worked on. There's a lot to do here. Uh, thank you for watching. Reporting for Raving Ryan, I'm Ryan Anastasia.